If you have multiple sales and marketing teams, multiple products, or multiple business units all operating out of your HubSpot, then your data can get confusing pretty quickly. So I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can manage those teams within HubSpot. The first and easiest way to manage multiple teams within HubSpot is to use custom properties. So you can see here that I've got a contact record pulled up and I have sections down here for two different business units, Aptitude 8 and Growth Panda. And within them, I have separate lifecycle stage properties and owners. So these are properties that you can create within HubSpot to manage different teams who need to use the same contact record or company record without having overlaps in that data and people getting confused about what stage they're actually in as it relates to their work. So if I go to property settings, you can see I've created some custom properties here. First one is assigned business units. And this is just a multiple checkbox property that shows a list of your different business units or products or teams. And it's multiple select instead of drop down because it could be a single contact could be related to multiple different business units. In addition to that, I've created a lifecycle stage and an owner property for each of the business units. And this is important because you not only need to know who owns the relationship, but also where they are in terms of the marketing and sales funnel. And those can be separate stages, depending on which business unit you're talking about. Here I've pulled up a form that is going to automatically set the business unit, depending on which one of my teams actually owns that form. So this is a form that's specific to the Aptitude 8 team. And that means that this property needs to always be pre-selected as Aptitude 8. I've made it a hidden field, so it doesn't actually show up on the form. The contact filling it out will not see it. But if you go into the settings, you can see I've made the field hidden and you can pre-select which of the checkboxes you want. So if this is a form that's specific to one business unit, then you can have it automatically set this assigned business unit. And I'll show you in a moment just why that's so important to have these boxes checked. If we go back into our settings and to the contact object, I'm gonna show you how you can customize your contact record to show relevant information for all of the business units that are assigned without making your contact records overly complex and, and have a ton of different properties that aren't relevant. So if we customize the default view of the left sidebar, you can see I've built out an about this contact section, which is default. I've got an aptitude eight section, which is specific to that business unit and a growth panda section. If we click into the aptitude eight section, there's a checkbox here that says, make this section conditional. That means it's only going to show up on the record if certain criteria are met. In this case, I've used this assigned business units checkbox property. And if that contains aptitude eight, then it's going to show this on the contact record. And you can see here in this sample contact, I have both of these uh, business units checked. So we're seeing both of these contact record sections. If I unchecked one of them, and hit save, and then we refresh. You can see the growth panda one disappeared, which means that this contact record is going to be a lot cleaner and you're only going to surface information relevant to the teams that are working on it. However, you could have it only show up uh, for certain teams. You could create team specific views, but I think it's good to see how other business units are interacting with your contacts because here I can see if I work at Aptitude 8, you can see I'm the owner on this record. I can look at this Growth Panda business unit section and see that this contact is already a customer. So using that information, I can maybe reach out to Connor and say, hey, can you do a warm introduction uh, to Brian because you are already working closely with him and I would like him to be one of my customers as well. Using custom properties is great because it's accessible to pretty much any tier of HubSpot and it's inexpensive. It's included in the cost of your HubSpot portal. However, there are definitely some downsides. When you're building all of these custom properties, that increases your risk of messy data. And especially with something like lifecycle stages, you're gonna to need to build complex automation to make sure that the correct lifecycle stage is set for each of your separate business units. And when there's that much automation in place, it is easy for contacts to get mixed up in different things and mess up your data. Another way that you can manage multiple teams or products or business units within HubSpot is HubSpot's built-in business units feature. 
So this is an add-on to HubSpot Marketing Enterprise, making it a little bit more of an investment than custom properties, but it does allow you to do some really cool things, especially if you're using separate web domains for different teams or products. So you can see here, I pulled up the HubSpot business unit setting. Once again, you're not gonna see this in your settings unless one, you have HubSpot Marketing Enterprise and two, you have paid for the add-on that is HubSpot business units. You can see that we've got a current view here of the Aptitude 8, which is our default account but we also have a separate Growth Panda business unit. And within this business unit settings page, you can see there's some account defaults where you can manage branding, integrations, and some other stuff. We also have domains and URLs. So if you your teams are using separate product websites or something like that, then you would be able to manage that stuff in here. And then you can change the email subscription settings for each of your business units. So you may have different needs in terms of how you want to communicate with your contacts. And this will allow you to manage all of that within a single portal. To create a new business unit, you just have to give it a name. And that will automatically add an entirely new business unit where you can set all of these different settings and be able to manage it separately. When you have separate business units, it's going to allow you to create new assets that are assigned to those business units and then contacts that interact with those assets will automatically be assigned to that business unit. So for example, if we go to create a form and I select a new form, you will see right here at the top, you have to select a business unit. So this removes the step that we talked about in the custom property section, where you have to create a hidden field that sets the business unit. This will automatically assign contacts to a business unit when they interact with an asset that was created for that business unit. If we go into the properties settings and search for business units, you can see that there is this default created property that HubSpot has built that is populated with all of our different business units. And this is what is going to be checked off when a business unit is assigned to a contact. The business units add-on is best for companies that are managing distinct brands, but want to have the same data infrastructure shared between them. The third and final way that companies can manage multiple teams or business units is to have truly separate HubSpot portals and then to connect them through a data warehouse solution, making sure that they have the ability to report on both portals in a, a central place. Having your separate portals integrated with a data warehouse solution will allow you to do company-wide reporting that you wouldn't be able to get in any either of the individual portals. There are lots of different data warehouse solutions available, and many of them already have integrations built into HubSpot. The downside to using separate HubSpot portals integrated with a data warehouse is that it's very expensive to manage two separate HubSpot subscriptions plus your data warehouse, and most businesses don't actually need their information to be that separated. It adds complexity, you are only able to report where that data actually exists. So there's a lot of complex integration needs that come with this. But if you do have a truly enterprise complex business that is managing multiple different brands, multiple different websites, and you need that data to be separate in the separate portals, but still need to do company-wide reporting, then this could be the right solution for you. If you're managing separate business units within HubSpot and have used one of these solutions, I'd love to hear how it's working for you. Or if you're using something else, please let me know. I would love to see what other solutions people have come up with. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found it to be helpful, please make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.